Next one we're going to talk about is, this has come up in the news before, we're talking about Francesco Mattina. Not too long ago, a couple, well, a couple years ago, he was accused of stealing other artists' art. And it's come up again. We got Alex Garner, who has a Nova cover that says that Francisco Mattina copied it for his Flash 750 cover. What do you guys think about this? Do you think it's something to be really concerned of? It's the second time we heard. Um, how do you feel about this? I, I think it's prevalent in the industry. I don't think it's just this person, but he seems to be getting the news cycle. What do you think about it, Ben? Uh, I think he's an easy target. Um, I don't really have a super, super strong opinion one way or another. Um, one of my employees, Brent, uh, Brandon, is a huge uh, Francesco Matina fan. Um, so was this particular piece that brought up uh, stolen? I don't know. I mean, I definitely can see some resemblances. I think the one everyone could point to, I believe it was a Punisher cover where they did like an overlay and it was like almost so obvious that at least the gun, if nothing else, was pretty much traced. Um, other than that, a lot of these other examples that people have pointed to, um, I think are pretty like arguable. I'm not saying that he did or didn't, um, but I think he's just kind of an easy target right now. Um, I think a lot of these artists nowadays use at least references, uh, if not other pieces, uh, as a strong reference nowadays. Uh, the unfortunate thing about it, if it is true, is this dude is insanely talented. I don't think anyone would argue his talent level. Uh, I mean, he sells covers. Whether you like him or not, he sells an insane amount of covers. He's got... Um, you know, just some of the best covers out there. Stores, uh, exclusives, love using them. Uh, DC clearly has, has loved using them and everything he put out. It's been amazing. Uh, so, I mean, I personally, like I said, don't really have much opinion on it. I like most of his art. Uh, what really annoys me more than anything, um, and everyone has the right to do what they want to do, is his lack of response on it. I feel like if he came out and just addressed it and said, hey, you know, this is what I'm doing, this isn't what I'm doing, I think it would put a lot of people at ease, but the fact that, um, you know, he just refuses to enter the spotlight uh, and just even put out a simple statement, I think gets people uh, worked up about it. Um, I haven't seen anyone not buying covers specifically because of it. I've seen a lot of yelling online about it. And uh, I could understand more as an artist than a consumer being upset by it. As an artist, you know, these guys are grinding and, and trying their very best to be put in the spotlight. So to see someone else potentially ripping off your work and getting um, glory because of it uh, would be extremely frustrating. But as a consumer, I mean, I don't think anyone is really, I don't have anyone coming in my store going, I'm not buying that cover. Regina did. <laughs> People are usually, I'm sick. <laughs> they don't give a crap what, what he, how he did it, whatever. Um, so I think Business-wise, I don't think anyone cares. I could see where artists are getting frustrated. My opinion, I, I honestly, I'm not even saying that just because I'm a store. I really don't. I like his art. Um, I think if it started becoming more blatant and more obvious like that Punisher one, I would definitely reverse that statement. But I haven't really seen, other than that one piece, anything definitive that like, oh, yeah, he's ripping off everyone kind of thing. So. so given the opportunity, if the price was right right now for you, you'd have no problem doing a Matina Black Cape exclusive? And now, you see, now you're saying, am I, would I put my name on it? That's, that's a different thing. Gotcha. Uh, a, I probably couldn't afford it. <laughs> uh, B, I don't know. You know, that's, that's something now where I have to reflect on, does the market – uh would accept me now using him uh and i don't know i don't know how to answer that i don't know if i would or not yeah i, I like i like that's why i like having ben on the panel because ben has the comic book fan opinion but then you also have to take of the market me you know i say me him as a uh yeah owning a comic store business and what you know you gotta think about other people's opinions at that time because it's going to affect your bottom line, right? Yeah, and I'm not trying to honk my own horn or anything, but I have spent probably more time than, I don't know about every shop, but certainly the majority of these shops thinking about not only the books I'm doing, but who's doing them. And then not so much on a, like a Matina level, but does it make sense having this person on this cover? Like um, one I was actually a little disappointed with that didn't do 
uh, as hot was our Folklords cover. Um, I thought long and hard about that. I read that book probably two or three months before uh, it got published, and I was really excited about it, and I thought it was going to be a pretty big hit. And I think overall it did do well, um, the book itself, but um, I ended up That's taking it. the Drew Zucker the- cover, right? Yeah, Drew Zucker, who did Canto, who yeah. I think probably should have done the interiors of that book, not only the um, – the cover. I mean, he just did an, uh, a really nice piece that fit the story perfectly. And um, I do that with every cover. Um, I think about the story. I think about whose style is going to fit it. Uh, well, I obviously use one of my guys, Esteban Salinas, uh, often um, because we have a good relationship. Um, but I also don't just put him on anything either. Um, the same goes for the rest of the artists and, and stuff that I've used. So yeah, I put a lot of thought into the whole picture. And if I was to use someone like Francisco Matina, um, that is something I would consider. Is his name going to put some controversy on it? I think sales-wise, there's more people who want his stuff that don't want his stuff. But it's beyond even just that cover. It could potentially tarnish what people have respect for what we do. So if I'm you know, essentially going for like a cash grab because he's got you know, good art or or marketable art, people might think, oh, well, he's just using a cash grab. He no longer has that integrity. So yeah, uh, it is something probably I'd have to think about. Um, Yeah. (laughs) And that one short. (laughs) Nico, what are your thoughts on the whole Matina art? Well, um, I'm not an expert on uh, intellectual property much like I'm not an infectious disease expert, uh, but a couple of things I find interesting. Uh, One, uh, why haven't any of the individuals who uh, allege that Mutina has appropriated uh, unlawfully their intellectual property filed a civil action against him uh, and the publishers? Two, why hasn't he filed a defamation of character Uh, lawsuit against those who are alleging that he is indiscriminately uh, appropriating their uh, intellectual property unlawfully. Um, And three, uh, what's kind of like the boundaries on this stuff? I I think we're in a a real um, interesting area, uh, but it's a a legal issue. And um, you know, I don't know where those bright lines are, are drawn, whether or not um, it's a jury determination, uh, like, um, you know, what is pornography? You know it when you see it, uh, because we're dealing with art. Um, you know, I think what's uh, even more interesting is uh, kind of like the state of art in modern comics, um, where we see cover artists uh, receiving exponentially more money uh, than people who do sequential art. And, um, you know, a lot of longtime collectors longing for uh, guys like Jim Lee, uh, even Greg Capullo, um, who were able to crank out some of the, the best uh, sequential art um, that any of us, I think, have ever seen. Um, so, you know, those are just kind of like uh, the things that I'm thinking about. I, I didn't get a lot of uh, time to look at the uh, Flash Nova um uh, photos you you were kind enough to provide those to me uh, but uh, apparently i missed the cbr article shame on me um but had i stared at them for hours i, I don't know that i would have been able to uh come up with some sort of like finite uh answer or um you know really uh, came to a conclusion that like well that's morally reprehensible uh that's not and uh, these are the factors or whatever um that i made my decision by um, you know, there's always, for example, like the Rise Zero uh, Punisher um, kind of deal and, and a lot of things that uh, over the course of comics, uh, people can point to as um, those kind of examples to either uh, condemn or exonerate uh, those who later down the line are accused of comparable things. Um, you know, but I, I can't necessarily say that I've got a... a real vested interest in any of it. So I haven't uh, spent a lot of time taking a look at it or uh, made any hard or fast opinions about it. Um, I will tell you one thing though, uh, it's hurt Matina's books uh, to some extent. 
Um, not that the uh, incentive variant market uh, isn't a little soft right now, uh, at least compared to what it once was. Um, but for me, that uh, is you know more of a buying opportunity uh, than anything else. I think a lot of those uh, books that I, I wouldn't have shelled out the cash for are now uh, getting closer to a, a dollar figure that makes sense to me. So I've kind of run the spectrum on uh, my opinion on this. As a uh, fellow Italian, uh, I love all the Italian artists. Um, so I will say, you know, <laughs> not guilty until proven innocent for my man, Matina. But at the same point, as somebody who pledges on this channel to keep it real, he did that shit and he's always done it. And, and it's, um, it's, <laughs> it's, it's difficult because you can look at the Alex Garner one. That one's tough, right? That, that one, you could, like Nico said, you could look at that all day. Um, you could go back and forth. I kind of trust Alex Garner um, with what he's saying, where if you put it digitally into the computer and you, um, you look at it from like a reverse, it's the same image. So I get that. Um, if you go back and look at his history from, you were talking about the Punisher thing, Ben, um, the Punisher rendering that he copied for Batman, uh, I think it's Grim Knight, um, that was actually a Frankie's Comics variant, um, who's a channel sponsor uh, in all um, transparency of our channel. Um, now, I don't want to speak for Kevin at Frankie's, but you look at the effect this has had on Matina. Matina was doing regular store exclusives, like consistent store exclusives, specifically with Frankie's. Um, you are not seeing Matina's name pop up in store exclusives that frequently. Where you're seeing it quite often is Spawn. And Spawn is a one kind of man island, right? Todd McFarlane runs all things that are Spawn. So Todd McFarlane's opinion is really the only thing that matters when it comes to Matina's work on Spawn. The only places Matina really has gotten work since this whole thing started is DC Comics on their Cover B program and the Spawn stuff. Furthermore, his DC cover Bs, he's, that's where he's gotten the, the, the kind of backlash from the fellow artists is they've been mad at, at DC for employing him. But I do agree with what Nico says. We haven't seen any civil action, at least publicly. So it's, it's difficult. But yeah, Matina's lost immensely. He lo he's lost out a lot of work. We haven't seen him work with Marvel since the whole thing happened. Um, we haven't seen uh, – his presence at conventions he had a social media presence instagram uh twitter at the time that's all gone uh he was represented by a uh a company that in the united states that managed his autograph signings um that worked as kind of like a middleman to get him uh exclusive covers for various stores that contract went away um, and this all happened kind of overnight and it was, it was a slew of things and a bunch of bleeding cool articles. Bleeding cool is not my favorite source, but when they do report something, it can make waves in the community. So it was a combination of like a Magneto statue, um, some, you know, some, the, the real bad one was the Lee Hyung Lee. He took like a dynamite cover and basically turned it into a, uh, a, uh, is that the fan Jane. expo venom. Yeah, the Venom cover. I mean, that's and that's real. That was like a real egregious one that like you really couldn't um, argue. That, but again, the thing that really drives me kind of nuts, but it piques my curiosity at the same point, and I would love for anyone in the comics community to get a uh, a real uh, interview with with Matina to ask him like, mm -hmm. at, with all the times you've been caught and all the things that you've lost. And how talented we all know he is, which is the only reason why he's even maintained a shred of a name in the business. He'd be excommunicated if it wasn't for the fact that he is so talented. Why, why continue to push it? Uh, unless you feel like the, at the end of the day, you're so talented that people aren't going to care. But he's not the only one because we have to bring up that Marvel, the Marvel Zombies guy. Uh, I, what's his name? Uh, Arthur, whatever. Sundian. He, he, Sundian. There you go. I would never have pronounced that right. But he's, an he's another one who uh, consistently has been caught and defiantly continues to just proceed as, um, as usual. And the people get angry. But the book sold. That Joker book that he did, the deceased book, um, he seemed to, he got so much shit for that, but yet the book was a big winner. Yeah. Um, so definitely agree with a lot of those points. And the big thing is the egregious stuff for me. 
uh, when it's so blatant, um, like that Grim Knight one, where it's just you can't argue against it. Not only that you can't argue, uh, you know, a different type of cover, but like it's almost a photocopy. Um, those are the types of things where I think the punishment then needs to get laid down. Um, I would imagine the reason that there hasn't been any sort of lawsuits is it would be incredibly hard to argue either way in court, uh, even bringing up type, you know, cause what's artistic, uh, you know, the interpretation on it. If you put a new, uh, new brush stroke over it, you know, is it a new piece of art kind of thing? So I think legally it would be extremely hard to argue, um, and so that's probably my guess. I don't really know that for sure. Um, but yeah, uh, Matina definitely took a big hit after, particularly around that Grim Knight, that Bleeding Pool. Um, but uh, as a retailer, I'm seeing his name all over my order forms. Uh, I just did an initial order um, where instead of maybe one cover from DC, there was like eight. Uh, and it's been picking up over the past two or three months on our order forms for Matina covers. So his stock, I don't know if maybe people are getting over it or if maybe DC is just saying whatever, you know, people are still buying it. Let's just start giving them work again. Um, maybe that starts translating into stores, picking them back up because you're right. The stores stopped using him uh, almost completely. And then uh, there was a few here and there. Um, but uh, yeah, I think you see him start to come back and how many more times can you have a, you know, egregious cover uh, before they finally say, I don't care how talented you are. Like this is stupid. So, plus, I don't know. I guess. Plus, you gotta look at it. It's the cover B, which is three ninety nine. It's a low buy in, so of course people are gonna buy it up. But also think outside of that. I mean, we all we're aware of who the person is, but think about the normal, everyday. Right. Not your big comic book fan, but someone that comes in or see something is like, "That's a cool cover." They don't even know who did it. They're just gonna buy it regardless. But I right. wonder if this would be the same. I mean, Jack, you kind of touched on it. If Matina didn't have the notoriety that he did would it still be as a big of an issue i'm sure it would it just wouldn't be as public i bet but i'm not in the art industry i know there's a lot of people out there that i mean just like every other industry people are in inside your peer group if you betray one of those peer groups it's kind of hard to earn that trust back yeah. yeah, but he's like the he's the Mark McGuire of comics. At the end of the day, like <laughs> cheating, we all know he's cheating. But at the end of the day, sometimes you know it's good for the game, and uh, so people kind of tend to look the other way because some some of the books have made waves. I will say, I mean, I'll fully admit that I still buy Matina covers if I look at the cover <laughs> and go, "Then that's a really cool cover," and it's three ninety nine or four ninety nine, whatever cardstock variant. If I like it, I'm buying it. Because what do we always say? Buy what you like. Absolutely. Motto of my life. And same thing with all my uh, comic collectors. Sometimes I get new people in and, oh, I haven't been collecting in how many ever years? You know, what should I get? What were you collecting back in the day? What do you like to pick up? I hate the pushing things that people don't like because it's whatever is hot. The last thing someone wants to see when they look back at their collection is, why, why do I have half of this this doesn't make any sense you want to look at your collection and go oh yeah i remember picking that up so buy what you like like and you're always gonna have both sides of that just like you have both sides of a bunch of other things and i mean mike vick i mean people <laughs> like mike vick still people don't like mike vick but yeah. it's something to talk about and people are buzzed about it i mean cbr is running articles on it again so and i'm i'm a huge fan of alex garner as well so i love his covers but uh yeah, it'll be interesting to see if Matina kind of stays, drops, or we had him on the cold this past week on three up, three down. But like Nico said, presents great buying opportunities if you're into those books. 